we have Dr. Janvi with us today. Uh, she is a first year PG resident in the Department of Medicine and CM Christian Medical College, Vellore. Uh, I would like to ask Janvi about her experiences uh, for the past one year in the department and being a, a resident here and uh, especially during this uh, pandemic season. COVID has been very unprecedented in terms of uh, the number of patients our institution uh, uh, were privileged to treat. And um, we had not just patients from Tamil Nadu, but across South India. And uh, we had all spectrum of patients and um, some rare manifestations of the disease. We had huge numbers suddenly, uh, overwhelming in fact, and uh, you were thrown uh, right into the heat of the uh, uh, pandemic. And so uh, tell us about your experiences and uh, uh, working in the COVID wards, being in PPE for your shifts and uh, uh, how has this experience uh, as, a, as a resident uh, uh, helped you and uh, your uh, various uh, thinking as you went through this? Uh, thanks for having me, Dr. Don. Um, so I started my residency in May last year, which was in the beginning or like quite in the middle of the uh, first wave. So. What I knew about residency was pretty much COVID. Um, uh, it was COVID was part of my uh, resident life from the get go. And my first rotation was in the medical ICU. And at that time, all the beds had been converted for uh, COVID. So I almost exclu exclusively saw only COVID ARDS in my first uh, one and a half months in the ICU posting. Um, and when I came back to the unit, we still uh, kept getting posted for, to COVID every fortnight or every three weeks or so um, with uh, normal ward rotations in the middle. Uh, COVID duties meant exemption from most of the ward work when we were there. So uh, when we were uh, du in during our COVID duties, we didn't uh, overstrain ourselves and we got to rest after our duties because uh, working in PP, even though it was only six to eight hours a day, which is shorter hours than what we would usually work in the ward, was oddly tiring. Um, but I think we've gotten used to it now, but that's how it started. Sure. Uh, how do you think uh, as a new person entering a new system, uh, this hospital, the institution which you chose for your PG training responded to this pandemic situation? And how do you think the, the department or the administration has helped you uh, uh, be useful and be uh, and, and, co and able to cope up with this uh, pandemic, which has brought in a, a large throng of patients? Um, I think... Uh... I'm looking at it from the inside, but I think CMC has been tremendous during uh, this pandemic in terms of its response. And that has been recognized by institutions elsewhere. And it has been recognized by the government that uh, CMC has uh, been a huge player and a huge support to Tamil Nadu and uh, to the country in terms of uh, being able to take patient load and uh, 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 provide, uh, disseminate uh, evidence-based information to outside this uh, institution and uh, help deal with the pandemic. Uh, as the uh, few patients started trickling in and then suddenly there was an explosion of patients. This was right just before I started, I think. Uh, we heard things about how patients were shifted overnight uh, to certain wards so that wards could be emptied out to accommodate the large number of patients coming in. Um, everywhere uh, in OPDs and in the hospital canteen, social distancing measures were implemented at the coffee shops. Uh, so uh, the hospital uh, responded quickly and uh, greatly to uh, the pandemic as it started. Okay. So uh, as a postgraduate who has entered the system and uh, getting uh, used to this uh, uh, PG life, uh, how did you think uh, uh, the support system provided by the department and the institution helped you in the daily management of COVID patients and uh, uh, how has it uh, uh, helped you in your training? Uh, right. So since COVID is not something that we find much about in our textbooks, uh, uh, all of us had to keep up with the latest evidence as and when it came in. So a COVID core committee was formed by the hospital with uh, specialists from internal medicine, infectious diseases, respiratory medicine, critical care, who would review the uh, available evidence and uh, formulate and update the institutional guidelines. And this is what we used in the ward on a daily basis as it was made available to us on the intranet. Um, we used to, we could easily refer to this and uh, treat our patients based on the guidelines and these would get updated and we would be notified if this happened. Uh, the institution uh, had uh, academic sessions for us. Um, uh, COVID pulse uh, lectures were organized, which we could watch and uh, uh, get expert opinion and uh, review of the latest evidence in order uh, to learn how to better manage these patients. Um, were you able to manage patients in NIV? Uh, were you able to uh, uh, 
manage large number of patients who had ARDS, things like that, which you would not have managed during your uh, post MBBS period or, or you seen during a, a MBBS time? Uh, yeah, uh, as I started my posting with ICU, I did get to learn a little bit about ventilators back then. Yes. But then again, we also had uh, repeated NIV related trainings online yes. as well as uh, a little later once the first, first wave died down in person to manage NIV settings and how to better handle patients with ARDS in terms of positioning, proning. Um, okay, sure. And uh, what about the other support structures, a PPE, vaccination, uh, your uh, duty shifts? Uh, uh, how do you think uh, the department and the institution came around you to help you in, in uh, such aspects? Um, so we did have a COVID ward postings okay. in initially six hour long shifts. And uh, then uh, we started doing eight hour shifts with a meal break in the middle. So the hospital provided us uh, meals during okay. the duty. So we didn't have to doff and go out and that, uh, we were not tired due to lack of food during our shifts. Um, there was uh, a consultant to do rounds with us in the ward during the day, every day. And uh, at night, there would be a night consultant on call to troubleshoot or to come round on sick patients every day. And there was always somebody available to call for help if we required. Um, PP, there was never any shortage of, I, I never experienced any shortage of PP personally. So uh, even though we heard news of people having to work without PP or having to reuse PP, fortunately, it didn't come to that. We had to ration N95 masks initially, but now, uh, fortunately, we don't have to do that either. And we can regularly change those. Um, we work in shifts, so uh, we definitely get breaks and uh, rest after our duties. And uh, this year, as the vaccines came out, um, the I think uh, the vaccines were made available to us soon as uh, the government allowed for vaccination of healthcare workers. So we all got vaccinated earlier this year and our department heads made sure that um, everybody was vaccinated and people who had uh, allergies or uh, side effects, like they were taken care of uh, when they were vaccinated. That's wonderful to know that you were provided for and cared for at uh, various stages of your posting in the past one year. And uh, I, I'm sure as the whole world was overwhelmed by this pandemic and various uh, uh, social structures were disrupted. I'm sure your education and your training was also in many ways uh, 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 fractured because of the COVID pandemic. And so how do you think uh, there has been, uh, do you feel there has been a significant compromise in non-COVID medicine uh, learning during these COVID times? Um, like Jibi had said, uh, a lot of our learning in the wards happens passively and it is based on the number of patients and the variety of cases we see. So uh, definitely we saw fewer patients in the ward and in the OPD than we usually would have. Uh, but I don't think there was a lack of variety in cases either way. We still got to manage the usual cases and we still got to see a few unusual cases. And uh, there was never any lapse in academics as even okay. with the pandemic, uh, academics continued online uh, on online platforms, our clinical meetings continued on online platforms and journal clubs continued on online platforms, even grand rounds in some units continued on online platforms. So um, uh, the department made sure that uh, we were uh, keeping up to date on our reading and uh, keeping up to date on our non COVID knowledge as well. Uh, Additionally, the things that we learned in COVID uh, are applicable elsewhere. So yes. management of ARDS, ARDS is not exclusive to COVID. So yes. we learned management of ARDS, we learned uh, uh, using handling an NIV. So we are able to apply that to our general ward uh, now. Um, and when we were posted in COVID wards, we didn't see patients with only COVID ARDS. There were patients with medical comorbidities that we had to manage, uh, patients with uh, diseases that would usually be managed by super specialties that we had to manage in the COVID wards because we were the uh, first person uh, over there. So we learned a little bit about hematology and nephrology when we were posted in COVID wards. So uh, okay. it was a different type of learning, but I don't think we missed out sure. terribly. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Uh, the last question I would like to ask is at a personal level, uh, uh, as a uh, first year resident, as a, as a physician in training, as a person who would like to uh, 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 treat patients uh, and give wholesome care to the patient. How have you processed this uh, pandemic season, uh, managing a lot of sick patients, uh, young patients dying in the wards? Uh, you, you, sometimes you, you would have to break bad news over phone. Sometimes you had to uh, be with a uh, grieving family. How at a personal level as a, a physician who is just beginning her journey, uh, this pandemic season has affected you? 
um i did not initially think that it was anything out of the ordinary what was happening because uh, like i mentioned i started my residency in the middle of the, the first pandemic, wave yeah. so i thought that this this has to be what it usually is like but then as the first wave died down and we went back to normalcy and then the second wave came and it was worse uh, that is when i it kind of hit me that uh, what was happening was uh, a huge thing it was something on like you said unprecedented and uh, it was affecting it was starting to affect us personally my colleagues and friends got affected by the virus uh, but fortunately nobody got too sick uh, so that was something to deal with uh, difficult to deal with at a personal level but uh, uh, in addition to that uh, uh, taking care we started seeing patients in their 20s and 30s in the ward that we didn't see in the first wave um there were patients in their 20s and 30s who were, who were not get icu beds because we just had so many patients and uh, patients in their 20s who were dying after going to icu so that was something that was difficult to register and uh, accept that uh, that was happening and being not being able to provide uh, icu beds to younger patients in their 30s 40s 50s just because we didn't have the resources at the peak uh, that was also very difficult uh, however we had uh, uh support from our colleagues and our seniors uh, who we could share with and uh, decompress uh, in uh, terms of dealing with this and uh, uh, coming to breaking bad news to the families uh, we could establish a rapport with the families as we would speak to them uh, really? daily on the telephone and uh, some wards had uh, uh, tablets or sometimes we'd just use our personal phones to uh, video call uh, the families and show them patients who were not able to verbalize who were not able to take the phone by themselves so uh, and the families uh, expressed gratitude when we did that when we went a little out of our way to help them uh, see their uh, loved one uh, who could not otherwise speak to them and uh, that was a nice feeling to uh, know that our efforts were appreciated uh, but uh, breaking bad news to relatives of young patients in their 20s and 30s their spouses and their parents that was very uh, distressing thanks for sharing candidly janvi and uh, i'm sure all of this uh, contributes to becoming a physician so uh, all of life is a training and as we go through different seasons in in the world and the society we learn from all of them and thanks for sharing your experience and all the best for your coming two years and uh, thank you uh, if i may add uh, sure. something positive towards the end of this we talked about uh, breaking bad news and young patients dying uh, there was an 18 year old uh, patient who i admitted from the emergency department uh, he had come very sick with severe ards and we had to intubate him in the emergency department and there was no icu bed at the time but i called my uh, the common icu consultant and they made call to the heads of departments they secured financial uh, help for this patient and the icu consultants went around and arranged to created a bed for him and the unit consultant let me know a few weeks later that the boy had been discharged healthy one 18 year old man yeah. so uh, experiences like this can be very rewarding also when the patients get yes, well yes, yeah. thanks for sharing that experience and i'm sure many more of such experience will come your way and as you work hard and uh, uh, treat the patient uh, well uh, god will reward you with many more such experience all the best and uh, god bless you thank you we have heard from uh, three of the post graduate residents of department of general medicine in christian medical college vellore and uh, we have heard and uh, learned about their experiences as they went through various stages of their training and uh, it gives a glimpse to uh, uh, their world and uh, and the training they get here in the department of medicine and uh, though it's full of challenges in terms of a new system uh, a large variety of patients which they have to cater to uh, patients uh, in emergency medicine uh, who are difficult to manage uh, arranging beds managing them in the wards doing um, shift duties in covid uh, times uh, we have heard all, all of the experiences and how they were able to uh, cope with this uh, situation and this program and some of the ways which they found it helpful Uh, being an alumnus myself in uh, in this institution, uh, going through my MBBS and MD general medicine program, I can uh, very well uh, identify with them and be very proud that I went through it. And it did not just help me in my uh, training as a physician, as a whole person. Uh, it has helped me to face challenges, uh, get help, be humble, learn with uh, senior and and junior people, and uh, and to cater for the whole person. so uh, people come to you uh, as patients from various parts of this world uh, to cmc uh, 
hoping that uh, CMC will give them authentic uh, treatment, will uh, will heal them, and uh, they some some of them come as last resort. And uh, our Department of General Medicine is committed to uh, caring for them and to uh, be competent, compassionate doctors. So uh, uh, thank you for. Uh, listening to this uh, series of interviews and uh, uh, you're welcome to uh, join our department. Thank you so much.